Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again, bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today, I'm going to be doing a guide in gameplay to the Prince Eigen. Now, we're going to be looking at the upgrade slots, the stats, the armor viewer, the consumables, as well as my commander of choice for the Eigen, and that will be Mueller. So, let's get started here by first looking at... It's a very nice camo. I really like this uh, German-style uh, camo. And you know what? The uh, Eigen is a very good looking heavy cruiser. You gotta really like this ship. It is, I'm quite happy I now got it as the Global XP ship and this, hopefully this guide here will uh, help you decide if you want to actually grind your Global XP for this ship. And I think it's worthwhile. It is a very fun ship to play. All right, let's look at the stats now. Now we're gonna look in here. The first thing we're gonna look at is the actual upgrade slots. Now this is a tier seven uh, heavy cruiser for the German fleet. So we're going to, therefore, we get uh, four upgrade slots here. Now, for the first one here, now I do want to make this a precision, accuracy, long range build. That's the, my focus goal on this here. So right off the bat, I do want to choose aiming systems to give you my, that minus 7% to the main battery, as well as some other additional bonuses there. Head back out. Now, if you've been watching my guides and gameplays, you know how much I really enjoy the propulsion mod. So I've chosen that one. And the reason is, is because I do a lot of stop and go when I'm playing my ships. And so this really caters to my play style. So therefore, I've chosen propulsion because I want that extra 50% uh, boost when I start up my ships going forward, that is. Head on back. Next one, we... Now, this one's interesting. I was, I think all three here are valid for your, for your Eigen, your heavy cruiser here. Uh, you may want to go with the steering gear mod to give yourself some more of that uh, swinging your uh, stern back and forth to dodge those shells incoming. You may also want to go for the target acquisition. However, I'm going to go for the concealment mod. I'm going to take the extra... Um, reduction in my detectability, as well as the incoming fire dispersion. I think that might be a good thing for this ship, but you know what? Any three here will more than suffice, based on how, how you feel about it. You could try each one, but each one is very good to use. And lastly, uh, once again, we have four choices for the uh, this upgrade slot. Uh, I don't think most people are gonna be choosing the secondary battery here. I think a lot of people will end up choosing main battery to give you that extra oomph to your main battery little time. But you got to realize though, the main battery traverse speed on the Ogin, or on the again, is a pretty slow uh, traverse speed on the Prince. So therefore, you might also want to go for your torpedoes if you want. But me, I went for the gunfire control mod because I want the additional 5% range because my focus here is to get, the, to get this ship hitting at long range to offset those uh, Yamatos and Kerfirsts and other long-range sniping vessels like the Iowa. All right, so therefore, that's my upgrade slots for the Eigen here. Now, if we move along here, we'll look at the stats themselves on the Prince. Uh, for uh, haul points, you got 45,000 haul points, and that's quite good for a heavy cruiser. You have to like that. Armor, well, you know, it's a, it's a cruiser, so your armor's gonna not be battleship style, but you know, you got your cruiser armor here, 13 to 160 mil. But you know what? It's a torpedo damage reduction belt of 10%. But you know what? At least that's something. You hit by a 10,000 or 20,000 yield torp from a Yadachi or a Shimakaze, it's only going to reduce about uh, 2,000 from that. Anyways, and it's going to hurt. Now, artillery. Now, for this ship, we've got four dual 203s. They strike at an 18.8 kilometer range, which is really nice. I really want that range up there. Our reload time for this cruiser is a very, very healthy 12.4 seconds, and our tur turn time is at 22.5, which is okay. Our HE shells, which we'll be using quite a bit on the uh, on the Prince, uh, do a 16% chance of starting a fire at 2,500 uh, yield, and our AP does a 6.3 thousand yield. Not bad. Now, the ship does have a good, healthy dose of secondaries. We've got a very nice 6 dual 105s, and they go up to the standard 5.2 kilometers. But pretty much, if a story gets in close to you like that, you should be able to take it out with your main battery. Uh, torpedoes. The ship does come with some very nice torpedoes on board. We do have four triple mount 533 millimeter drillings. Those are really nice torps for the uh, Prince here. Reload time, 68 seconds, which is very destroyer-like. Very, very good. 
and uh, we have a maximum yield of about 14,000 on there, which is really good as well. And thankfully, the torpedo range is sitting at 8 kilometers, which I think is standard, and we have a standard speed of, a, of a 60 knots. Very good for torpedoes, and they have a nice range on there as well with your torpedoes. Now, our maneuverability, it's a very quick ship for a heavy cruiser at 34.3 knots, a very nice and healthy 770 meter uh, turn circle and a very good 9.8 rudder shift. And if you took one of the uh, the upgrade slots where you can reduce that rudder shift even more, man, you're going to have to store your like maneuverability, which is really, really nice to have in the ship. Concealment, while well, we're sitting at 11.7 kilometers, that's pretty darn concealed for a cruiser. You have to like that. All right, so now let's look at the arm reviewer because this here is what's important. I'm only going to focus on two areas of the armor viewer. That is, it's uh, the, weak, uh, the weak and vital part of the ship, and that is the citadel. We want to see where our citadel sits, because that's so important in our vessels to determine how we're going to protect them. Now, if we look at the citadel deck itself, you can see the citadel itself sits below. It looks like, no, it sits just below the waterline with a little bit of that citadel poking itself above the surface there, just a little bit. Overall though, it's pretty much fully below the waterline, and we do have some pretty good armor on there. The deck armor on the Citadel is sitting at 30 millimeters, and that's really nice to have. You can really duke it out with cruisers in this thing and not have to worry. This thing can brawl cruisers, no problem. Now, if we um, are four and our aft you see those things on the end they've got 80 millimeters of armor that means when you're angled and some shells go in down through your deck and they uh they're going to bounce off that 80 mil that 80 mil is thick so that's really nice to know that you can actually bow with this thing and not not worry too much when they get through your bow now <laughs> however there's a weakness along here though that torpedo bulkhead look at that 20 mils that's nasty that is pretty weak there, so you got to be aware of that. All right, so let's move out of here. And do note the Citadel stretches from the first turret all the way down to the rear turret. All right. Now, the other one I want to look at here that's very important because you're going to be doing this a lot with your ship is our fore and aft and armor. Now, this is actually pretty good for a heavy cruiser when you look at this. If we look at the fore end plating, you notice there it's 27 millimeters. It's not 30 or 25, it's 27, and that's pretty good. So basically, when using this ship, you really kind of want to angle it as much as you can. And uh, get behind those islands and uh, throw the uh, shells over top of the islands as well. But this thing can uh, duke it out with the cruisers, no problem. And it can go up against some of the, uh, um, the more uh, minor battleships, I would say. And you can also see in there, on the fore end, our fore end deck is also sitting at 27 millimeters. And basically, our aft end is going to be the same thing basically the exact same 27 mil plating on the sides as well as 27 mil on the deck. Now just quickly let's have a look at the uh, decking here. Whoops not that one. Sorry. Let's go to this one here and you can see that our overall deck is 27 to 40 millimeters of armor but primarily it's all 27. All right so overall you basically don't want to duke it out with battleships. You're going to get yourself sunk. Uh, you'll last for a few minutes I guess but um, you can really deal a lot of damage to enemy cruisers and maybe some of the more minor lower tier battleships at tier six. All right. So basically, though, stay away from those. You want to move on here. Okay, let's move on. Overview of this ship. It's tough. It's got above average base HP reading and that HP uh, rating, and that's really good to have. Extended sonar, which is great for detecting those uh, those pesky destroyers. Sonar's rain. Or duration is increased and you got superior AP damage you got above average AP shell damage for this ship that's nice it's uh now this Prince is one of the series of Admiral Hipper class ships and one of the most powerful heavy cruisers in the 1930s during World War II she was equipped with powerful anti-air guns and an enhanced fire control system so this ship might be a very good selection once carriers arrive as a form of AA defenses against those now, what's nice is they built five of these ships in this series, and they are very beautiful and very tough ships. All right, let's move on here. Let's get out of the armor viewer and that. And now let's have a quick look at those consumables. Now, we have a standard damage control, and here's the sonar. 
Now, currently, the sonar sits at, uh, you can detect torpedoes when it's on at 3.8 kilometers, and you can detect ships at 5.6 kilometers, which is really nice to have. We have a consumable duration of 118 seconds, very, very nice. Reload time is 171, and we have two of these at the moment. Now, for the next one, now for this, some people might want to choose this instead. This is a main battery reload booster, giving you, uh, you can reload that uh, battery of yours up. But you know what? I really don't think that's really worth it. I think it's so much more worth it to have the sonar. I think that's what you really want to use here. Now, for we got a catapult fighter on here, which goes up for 360 seconds. And also, we have a repair party on a cruiser, which is nice to have. We got two of them, and it repairs 270 points per second. It's only light damage, though. But you know what? Any kind of repair on a cruiser is a nice thing to have. We do have a booster on here at the moment, an epic booster. We got the, uh, the camouflage, and we got our CC flag running, okay? Now, let's have a look at M uh, Mueller here. I might be pronouncing Mueller wrong, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. So, uh, forgive me if it's wrong, but that's what I'm saying. Anyways, here we go. Now, for Mueller here, I did. Now, I do have the brand new Azure Lane Commander, uh, Sharnhorst, up to a high level. She's a level 15. And the reason why I chose that is because I really wanted her sniper ability. This is the dispersion of your main battery on your ship because this is a long range sniping type cruiser. So, we're going to get an, ad an additional minus 3.4% to our dispersion, which is really nice to have. We're also going to put the standard on here, which is Norman Scott, giving us a better shell grouping or accuracy. He's also high level. We got him at 4.25% bonus. So that's really going to help out our cruiser here with this focus. Now, the base trait of, of Mueller is um, maximum speed of my cruiser. So my cruiser is already up for an additional 4% in speed, as well as the Epic Booster it gets it really up there. So that's kind of nice to have. we got a really quick cruiser here. Now, for our first skill... And do note that Carl von Mueller here is a level 14. Now, for this one, we're choosing to be on range because, like I mentioned, we want to build a range one here to, so we can go up against those legendary and tier 7 battleships and hit them from range. We can take a 10% increase to our range here. Now, of course, we could also... What I used to have on here is I used to have the uh, Russian cruiser commander on here to give me additional range as well, but I'm trying it out now with some more accuracy and just better dispersion at that range. That's why I have uh, Sharni on here and not, uh, what's his name, Kutasov or something like that from the Russian uh, cruiser fleet. Anyways, we are going to also at second, um, second level, which is also maxed out now, is we've chosen Igniter to give our cruiser shells some additional oomph to their uh, fire chance. But most, lots of times I do use Expose, but I am thinking I'm going to be using this one here. Now, at level 3, we're definitely going to take punch through without question, giving our cruiser main AP shells, which are devastating on the um, the Prince here, an additional plus 8% with that penetration multiplier of plus 5%. And then down here for level 4, once again, we're going to take fixated, giving us better shell grouping of a plus 3%, combined with uh, Scott, that's really, really nice to have. It's now about a 7.5%. And with that dispersion of the main battery of minus three, combined with Sharni, gives us about a 6.5%. That's really nice and significant. And lastly, for the legendary skills, we are going to be going with the refill station to once again, as long as we're within range of other ships, an additional 10% to our cruiser's main guns. Okay, that's how I have Mueller set up. Now, let's move out of here. And what we're going to do now is we are going to take this cruiser out into a standard match to see how well it performs, all right? Okay, so please stick around for that. Well, thank you for sticking around to watch this match with the Prince Eugen. Now, this is in the Land of Fire Domination Type Game Mode. This is also pre-recorded. I'm doing the audio over top of it afterwards. And also note that this is not going to be spectacular gameplay, Krakens, six or seven sinking, stuff like that, no. This is what you can expect for a basic match that you can expect for the Prince Eugen when you're playing it. A standard match, okay? That's what this one's going to be. So, uh, let's have a look here. Now, we're spawned on the south side on the eastern side of the map. Southeastern side here. We do have a couple of ships with us. And uh, we're going to move up. We've got three enemy destroyers. And uh, we've also got a bunch of battleships and a bunch of cruisers. 
Now, I like the uh, heavy cruisers, and uh, one of the big reasons why I got this as a Global XP ship, because I really enjoy the heavy cruiser play, as I'm not very keen on the, um, the HE spamming light cruiser play. That's just not my type. But I do like the, um, the abilities of the heavy cruisers. This has got, what, a 12-second reload on it, and we're running it with uh, Mueller on here. And uh, I think he'll be. I think he should be uh, pretty fine for this ship. So we're moving along here, and let's see what we come up with. Uh, let's. Uh, we're gonna wait. I think our first uh, target's gonna end up being a Cleveland, and I have no problem uh, shooting at Clevelands. <laughs> okay, I don't mind shooting them. Mind you, they are they are incredibly difficult ship to uh, to Citadel or take down. So right now we're going to be using our HE on the Cleveland. And sure enough, we got some uh, good hits there. Cleveland's already lost a third of its hull points right there. We're in a good position on the Cleveland here. Now, it would have been a lot better if I had AP loaded, so I switched over my AP right now. But unfortunately, he's going to start maneuvering away and start cutting away. AP on this ship is beautiful. Mind you, we're going to take some shots here at the AP on an angled Cleveland. And you can see we got a couple penetrations there. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've also incapacitated one of his turrets. We're just going to maneuver around here. Now we, we switched back to HE. Because I really want to test out how well the HE is on this ship. So I've been doing a, a lot of HE with it lately. It takes a while. You know, 10, 20 matches to probably get a good feel of the ship. And I only had this uh, ship for uh, a few days now. There we go. Another uh, hit on the uh, Cleveland, getting a fire started, which is great. Cleveland's trying its best to get away, but it's not going to get away. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a few more shots in here. Get those rear batteries in our different arc there. We could hit that ship this time. Different pad. Yep, we got the ship that time for some more pens. And just as we fired, someone else was able to take it out. So Cleveland, gone. Now we have an Alabama, which ends up being a little too far out of our range there. So we're going to start moving forward here. We're going to start working our way towards center and seeing what ships that, um, that destroyer could spot for us out there. Now I do note the, uh, the Prince Eugen has some uh, really good torpedoes on here, 8 kilometer torps. And I don't believe I utilize them at all in this match. I think this is all a pure uh, gun match for the uh, Oigen here. And like I mentioned, this is a standard average match. I need intelligence data. Okay, we're moving along here. And I think maybe the, the ships that start getting spotted, I think might be a Yamato has sailed itself into the center. If I recall correctly, we'll find out momentarily. Oh, no, we got the Lemfastique over there, so we're going to start focusing on that. Good thing for HE testing on that. So let's see if he pops his head out over there. And unfortunately it does, but we're going to take a shot here in there and see if we can, we can tag him at all. It's a Hail Mary. And of course it missed. We can see him now. Any kind of damage we could do to look fantastic will help our destroyer to gun battling it right now. And we missed there. We're going to try again here. Oh, he's got his, uh, and we hit his, uh, he's, he's hurt now. So we should be able to get a good shot on him this time. And there they go. Oh, just as our shells were about to land and take him out. He ends up getting annihilated by another ship. So, overall, good team effort to take out that left fantastique. All right, now there is a Yamato sitting in the middle of the map with uh, half its all points out there. And we're going to see if we get some fire. Yep, we got a fire started on the Yamato. These are pretty good strong guns on the Yoigan here, I'm finding. And there's the Alabama again. We're going to take a shot on the Alabama as well since he's broadside. I do like the feel of these uh, guns. I didn't realize it at that moment, but there was a big uh, battleship off to my side there. So I unfortunately ran into them because I wasn't watching where I was going. Happens all the time in the games, right, guys? We all do that. Okay, now we're going to move up a bit here to get behind this island a bit so we don't get targeted. 
while we lay some uh, HE fire into that Yamato. There they go again. Now we're getting some really good hits here. Another penetration there. So the HE shells I'm finding do work pretty, pretty good on this uh, heavy cruiser. Mind you, I, I, I imagine the AP shells are just going to be really, really good. When I start really playing around with the ship a lot more. I think I'm going to have fun with this, uh, this, uh, this cruiser. And there goes some more shots. Pretty accurate, too. Another fire started on the uh, model there. And there goes some big shells into that model now. Fire again, but I think maybe that's going to be our last one. I think maybe our battleships take it out in the next uh, salvo or two. And there goes the HE fire in there. We got another fire started, so we got some good fires going on the Amato. Alright, now we're going to move along here. And uh, instead of going to the right, I'm going to continue on down to the end of the island there. And see if I can come up and uh, present, present my guns over on that side. They do have a whole bunch of ships left. And uh, you know what? It's pretty even though that we've lost three. They've lost three. They did have the advantage, I felt, because they had the extra destroyer. But we've uh, rectified that. Now, there's your model way, way out there. He's going to pop out around the island way out there, showing his broadside. We're going to keep... Moving along here. There he is right there. We're going to take the shot. There they go. And I think our battleships are going to notice him pretty soon because they're going to hammer that Yamato when you're in the broadside. you got to take advantage of that. Well, it looks like a torpedo got him. So a torpedo took him out. All right. So we'll keep moving along here. Now, there is a red destroyer sitting down way over there. He is over there, and I think we're going to be dealing with that destroyer. I can't remember correctly or not. We'll have to see. Let's see what we have when we get around this uh, this point on this island here. Got destroyer in uh, smoke over there, probably. Okay, there is an enemy Alabama again. That's the same one. We'll take some shots on him. Take off some more shots, and then... Looking around here. And he's asking for help over there, so we're going to help him out. He wants us to, and sure enough, I'll let him know, yeah, sure, you got it. I'm just looking for that damn destroyer that he's talking about. That's what I'm looking around for. And then I realize, there he is right there. So now we're going to focus all our fire onto the cabbie. And that cabbie is one heck of a good gunboat. But you know what? It's no match for the, uh, the Prince Eugen. And we're going to take another shot on him, and we're going to take that guy. There they go. And we sank him. So, cabby gone. Man, those, those, those cabby, that Russian, it's a really, really good gunboat at the legendary level. Cruisers, when they see them, they have to focus on taking them out. Okay, now we're going to take some shots on the Baltimore there. Now, we got ourselves in a position here. We've got the Baltimore's going to be targeting us, the Alabama will be targeting us, and another ship will be targeting us as well. So we're going to see how well this thing can hold up against that kind of uh, situation. Now, we're getting some really good shots on the Balti here. I could have switched over to AP, but like I said, I'm, I'm uh, trying out HE on pretty much everything. Let's see how it works. And HE looks, it's, it's pretty good. There we go. We, we, did, uh, we did a good number on the... Uh, the Baltimore there. Now we are going to focus on the uh, Alabama there. Take a shot there. We're going to see what's firing on me over there. It's a destroyer. So we're going to have to go after that destroyer for sure. It's a gearing. Now he's going to go behind the island. So I'm not worried about him right now. And we are going to move our way ourselves over there. We're going to focus on this Alabama. See if we can sink him here. And unfortunately we don't sink him. Um, we did assist on that, which is good. So we could have had a lot more sinkings than we did in this match. We're going to focus on the Baltimore here now. 
Now, if we were firing AP, we probably would have sank them. But uh, the HE is just whittling them down slowly. You definitely want to make use of your AP on the uh, cruisers when you can. But like I said, I'm just trying HE out to see how well it goes. Okay, we, we did show the angle of the torpedoes there. We're not going to get any torps away, but I'm guessing that the gearing has probably sent some torpedoes down here. And yeah, sure, he's done that. We're going to get around here, and we're going to target that gearing and take it out. I think he beached himself, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he beached himself, so it's going to be a pretty easy kill there. And gone. There's our second sinking there. So overall, a pretty average match with the... Uh, with the uh, Prince Eugen there. And hopefully this gives you an idea whether or not you want to grind for the XP for the ship. I think it's good. I'm going to look forward to playing this. Uh, we've got um, a couple sinkings, a bunch of main battery hits, a few capacitations, some fires. We came uh, around fourth on leaderboard there. Overall half decent. And we ended up making 147,000 in credits for the ship on that kind of an outing. Really good. Well, there you have it, guys. If you enjoyed this uh, uh, video, please give me a like. I appreciate that. It really does help the algorithm. And uh, this is Spotted Cookie Gamer, and I'll see you on the uh, seas next time. Thanks for watching.